Fifty years ago, in a lightning six-day war, Israel captured East Jerusalem, West Bank and Gaza. The Israelis saw it as liberation, the Palestinians as the start of occupation. Now Conflict Zone is in the West Bank and Israel to record a special series of interviews looking back over the last 50 years. My guest here in the West Bank city of Ramallah is Nabil Shah, a former Palestinian foreign minister, advisor to the president and peace negotiator. Why, after so long, have the Palestinians achieved so little? Nabil Shah, welcome to Conflict Zone. I'm very happy to be here. A lot of Palestinians quoted in the media look back at the 67 war and describe the years since then as a half century of humiliation. But a lot of it, it was self-humiliation, wasn't it? Palestinian disunity, human rights abuses, corruption, violence. You're going to tell me it's all Israel's fault, but it wasn't, was it? When you can't really hit the, the murderer, you, you put the blame on the murdered. That's typical. You, you have to take some That's responsibility <laughs> for the violence, the corruption, the human rights abuses inside the Palestinian territories, don't you? Because there are problems. We are human. And uh, even when we are under occupation, even when we are with so many agonies caused by that occupation, we have our own mistakes. But the major problem is there. But the we Palestinian the people lay them at your door. We have the latest Palestinian polls. Blame for the leadership. Only 25% said the leadership is doing its best. 41% said its role was inadequate. And 32% called it negligent. So it's time for you to go, isn't it? I think this is much better than I thought. Uh, really? The, the, yeah, of course. You're you pleased by these results? No, not, not pleased at all. 41% uh, say you're inadequate. It, it is normal. When you fail to get that settler occupation off your chest, when you fail to free your people, when you fail to develop, to, 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 to give them independence. Exactly, when, your when failure. You, when you fail, failure. It is not our failure. The, fa the question has to do with straight balance of power. The Israelis are 40 times our per, per capita income. They have the fourth largest air, air force in the world. They are an atomic uh, 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 country. They get all the support from the United States. And therefore, they beat us. We struggle, And the widespread view resist. remains that you've let your people down. You've let your people... You don't hold elections anymore, this, apart from a few local ones. But okay. despite the basic requirement in the Palestinian basic law, what on earth makes you think you're still legitimate as leaders? That's not the issue. It is the issue. No, no, no. The, the issue is... They want you to go and you say you're staying here The issue here is a result elections. of the secession. If you really want to talk about the separation, yes. I think this has been our major failure, our inability to end the, uh, the division between Gaza and the West Bank, between Hamas and, and the rest of the organization. It was this that really took away our ability to continue our elective democracy. We were very proud of our elective democracy. We had full presidential and legislative elections less than a year after we, we, we came to Palestine. And now you Palestine. have a president who is already 12 years into what was supposed to be a four-year term. Yes, but you know why? Well, that's got nothing to do but, with but democracy, you know why? Has it? It's got nothing to do with you democracy. You cannot hold a, a democracy under disunity. Otherwise, you consecrate the division. If we were to hold elections in the West Bank only, which is the only way we can do it if Hamas uh, re rejects national elections, and Hamas did. And if we'll do that, yes, we will have more democracy in the West Bank, but we do not represent Palestine. We then will be democratically representing the West Bank alone. This so is talk to me problem. about the disunity. You, why, why is it that you and all the other Palestinian factions are unable to put aside your selfish factional interests and work for the Palestinian people as a whole? You've had more bust-ups and more reconciliations than a Hollywood marriage, haven't you? Yeah, that, I like your style anyway, <laughs> but you know. It's a bit more serious than that, isn't it? Now, to be more serious, you really have to get to the, to the, to the real issue. There are issues in which we are responsible, no doubt. If I tell you we are not responsible, that's not serious. Your people expect better, don't they? They're they telling you they should the expect. Post, they expect better. They should expect better. And, and two-thirds want Abu Mazen to go. 
They want him to resign. But this is great. That means he has two thirds, and one third want him to go. That no, is two thirds. Two thirds want him to go. Two thirds. Okay. Eighty percent. Eighty percent. Why do you cling to on to power without elections? The question you need to have election in all of Palestine. You cannot have election in the West Bank. Having election in the West Bank is worse than re re delaying democracy. That's just an excuse. It is it? not an excuse. It is a. You an, had elections twelve years ago. You have, we have elections when we could do them in Gaza and the West Bank. Then we'll have elections. The point is there are better people, the, aren't, these there? Are the aren't there? are better people standing in the wings? No, no, but these there are... are young, be younger people, certainly, standing in the wings, aren't there? No, they should be there. We should have a, a new generation ruling Palestine. But that has to be done in a way that leaves it open. The door is left open to unity. We have to go to unity. If we have failed in any, really in anything, it's in, in our ability to defeat all the environmental pressures in order to make unity. Because making unity will regain democracy. I mean, this is the issue. It isn't that there's anybody yeah, and there's here... There's no that, hope on the horizon of you doing that, is there? There's no hope whatsoever of you doing Don't that. you ever mention that word hope, because without hope, the Palestinian would have vanished long time ago. Hope is the, the fuel that keeps the Palestinians alive. So hope doesn't go away. It's a question of finding a new way of doing it. Maybe it's trying sure. something else. Let's, let's, let's talk about violence, because over the last 50 years, the violence of the Palestinian movements has so colored international opinion towards you and your fate. By, by the 1970s, the Palestinian movement became known for shocking acts of random violence against civilians, didn't it? Not just in the Middle East, but around the world. We got used to seeing your masked gunmen shooting civilians, hijacking planes. Didn't do you any good, did it, this kind of violence? You know, when you, are, when you are facing the violence of a, one of the most violent occupations, which is not really like the, the civilized British occupation, in which the British government occupied India just to enslave the Indians and get money and, and, and wealth out of India, but never thought of throwing out the Indians and bringing the, the British people to, to take over the, the, the Raj in India. Does this the, excuse the French, your organizations no, is, like Abu Nidal, for no, instance, no, that went around killing no, schools I'm, I'm, of I'm, people? I'm not excusing anything, but I am only telling you that when you face a settler Zionist occupation that is determined to get you out and take your place, and they're already thrown out but six and a half million Palestinians. But you telling me this as if it's some you kind of justification. You have. And yeah, against and shooting civilians everywhere around the world no, is no, some no, kind no, of justification. No, no, Children. We don't do Children. that. Children. You we did. We never you did. that. You no, did. No, no. You did. Some of us hijacked planes, and we did our best to stop that, and we did. Their objective was not to kill anybody. Their objective was to demonstrate to the world the agony they feel. But we did not like it. Dr. Fact, Schaff, we let, me let, me to let me jog your but memory. But in the meanwhile, you, your you have to also remember the violence that the Israelis have done. You've got to remember Sabra and Shatila. You've got to remember Der Yassin. You've got to remember those, those civilized me, people jog, coming from let Europe. Let me jog your memory. children and women in the street. What let are you talking about? Let me jog your memory about some of the things that you did. In 1974, two of your hardline factions raided northern Israel, killing 43 civilians and children at a school in Malot and a block of flats in Kiryat Shmone. You remember this? Yes, I do. And the fact is that... And we condemned it and we stood against it and we, in fact, took all the measures to make something else like that happen. We stopped it. Fatah took... Fatah always, which is the major leading organization of, of the PLO, never tried to violate the rules of the international legality of struggle and resistance against the occupation. Yeah, but you had all these splinter groups that you were quite happy for them to go off we and shoot people happy. left, right, and we center, We were not happy to hijack huh? planes. We were not happy to hijack anything. We went into armed struggle against the Israelis. We shot back at the Israelis every time they attacked us. We shot back at the Israeli uh, armed forces whenever there was an opportunity. Even, we, were even in now. A, we were in a war. Dr. Shad, let's talk about the attitude. Your, your president, Abbas, has said recent, re repeatedly that he renounced violence and embraced security cooperation with Israel. Okay. March last year, he says, I will not enter a violent struggle. I will not ruin my people and my country. And he respected all of them. I will never permit violent struggle against Israel. All right? Okay. Okay. But you, Dr. Shah, are quite happy for the violence to continue, aren't you? You, told, you told Palestinian Auda TV 
earlier this month that you never thought there was a problem with engaging in armed struggle at the same time as engaging in political and diplomatic efforts, didn't you? Yes, in support of your cause. The Palestinians, you said, had an indisputable right to take part in armed struggle. Here we are, sitting in the President's office, two radically different views, one from you, the advisor, on. and one from him, the Hold President. Hold on, let me answer that, because that's exactly what, exactly what Netanyahu did to Abu Mazen, inciting Mr. Trump about him. He fabricated a, 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 a video in which Abu Mazen starts by saying, I incite against Israel, so they say. But I didn't fabricate they, any videos. I but you are fabricate. fabricating the explanation. No, I am no, I am no, talking no. about two different eras. The era of, of, of armed struggle and the era of peaceful struggle. And you said this last And week. I said in the era of uh, armed struggle, we had the right under international law to fight back our enemy who never came into Palestine by negotiation. They occupied Palestine by war. And that gives us... And an you don't think but that's giving we... the green light now no, no, to no, people no, to go out? Not at all, because Abu Mazen himself was part of the armed struggle before we signed the Oslo Agreement. So condemn the stabbings. I don't... Uh, condemn the stabbings. He condemned it. He condemned it. He's my leader. No, I'm asking you he's to condemn. condemn. He condemned he it. He condemned it. You didn't. He I do... What you don't he, condemn the I, stab... Here's I, the difference, no, you see. No, no. The difference is you also not with one the voice. Other side. You don't speak with no, one voice. No, we speak with one voice because if we didn't speak with one voice, we will be found out by, uh, by by the social media. If we don't speak by the White House, so you will see us on Twitter saying two different things. We will see us on, on Facebook. So, so I'm we asking don't. you to say the same thing. Condemn the stabbings that have taken place Look, of Israeli civilians. No, we, Condemn them. We decide, you, you won't do it, will no, no. you? We decide to you do, can't wait do a, it. Wait a minute. You can't Mr. do it. Mr. Netanyahu, Simple invitation. Days ago, inaugurated a hospital in Haifa. I'm not talking about Mr. Netanyahu. I'm inviting you to condemn what you say you do condemn, I, which is violence against Israel. I but you won't I, I do con it. I condemn violence against civilians. I have condemned it even when we're engaging in, in, in armed struggle. Armed struggle is, should only, according to international law, be addressed to the occupying forces and not civilians. So I, I condemn any violence against civilians, whether it is today or 100 years ago. That has not changed. And that's why, but you, what give, changed? That's why you authorize payments for terrorists, isn't it? This is the big thing that they throw this at you, the, that the international this, community this is, objects this to. This is a racist claim. You are being a racist when you raise that issue. Because you, you cannot be racist enough to tell me that one million Palestinians are terrorists because they have all been through the Israeli jails. In 50 years, one million Palestinians were in Israeli jails. Were they all terrorists? When I negotiated the Gaza Jericho agreement with the Israelis, there was 15,600 uh, in, in the Israeli jails. The Israelis accepted to release all of them with the exception of 229. But here's what the, here's what the so, international so what community... Here's what, what the international about? community calls hypocrisy. You promise security cooperation to Israel to prevent attacks, and then you pay the attackers that violate that promise. We don't pay the attackers. We pay the family of people in Israeli jails. The Israeli government pays the family of criminals who are in Israeli jails. The world isn't buying your version. The UN announced in May that it stopped supporting a Palestinian community center in the West Bank because it was named after a woman who took part in a 1978 terror attack. The UN Secretary General, isn't mild it, man, isn't, isn't Antonio that? Gutierrez, ah. says the glorification of terrorism or the perpetrators of heinous terrorist acts is unacceptable under any circumstances. Don't, don't you see really the, the racist bias here? As I was from giving, the UN? Uh, no, from everybody. Really? From everybody. Every, Everybody's a racist. Not everybody is a racist all the time, but some good people can fall. Because Your international the, donors Guterres, are racist. Guterres is a friend. Guterres is a socialist. Guterres is a progressive man. And he's condemned. But you he for can paying, be. Making he these can payments. be, in fact, induced by the Israelis or others to say things that totally contradict his position in life. Why? So he just doesn't understand. He's clueless, is he? He just doesn't understand. Only those who understand are the Israelis and their people. These are the only people who understand. Donald Trump, when he was recently here, yeah. made it clear yeah. in public, standing next to President Abbas, yeah. peace can never take root in an environment where violence is tolerated, funded, or rewarded. Exactly. How do you understand? 
Don't you understand? Well, how do you understand it? Because, he, did, understand because he didn't that once that mention Palestinian state or Palestinian self-determination. Yeah. That's the price you pay he didn't for mention, funding. No, no, he didn't mention anything. He didn't say. That's why he didn't he mention. He did not mention moving the American embassy to Jerusalem. He didn't mention stopping settlements. He didn't mention. You didn't get anything didn't, out of the he visit. He didn't did mention you? The, uni the unification of Jerusalem. You as didn't a, get say, anything out of the visit. Did nobody you? got. You got forty-five an, nobody minutes. Nobody got anything from that visit. Time. That visit. You got forty. Five minutes of his valuable time. Why? Because, in his words, violence is tolerated, funded, and rewarded by you. By the Palestinians? That's what he said. He didn't say that the Israelis conduct violence daily? Doesn't he talk about the Israelis destroying Palestinian homes and building colonial settlements instead? But your international donors. Dr. Shah, they're getting fed up with violence, this line, aren't they? Violence. They're getting fed up with this line no, no, of yours. No, no. Your Prime Minister confirmed in January that foreign financial support to the Palestinian budget is about half the forecast level. Saudi Arabia stopped making regular contributions in April last year. The EU and the US have also reduced direct budget support. So? So the world's getting fed up with you, fed up with this line. They're not accepting it from you, are they? Ah. Uh. Are they? You want us to? They want. They want. You want them to be fed up with us and to express that in not giving us enough money, or is the problem the money we give to the prisoners' families? I mean, I don't know what problem. That's one of the reasons, about. isn't it? Not at all. Has but they're cutting to, the funding. No, no, no. They have nothing to or do. With, or is it the corruption? There's nothing to or do. Or is with, it the corruption? There is yeah, nothing is to it? do with the reason. What is it? There is. It is their problems. They are facing problems. They are financing fights in Syria and Iraq and Yemen. They are having problems because the price of oil have dropped down. There are many problems in the world why the Arab world are not giving up as much money as they had promised they would. They are giving money, but now they are preferring to fund specific Mr. development Trump. projects. <laughs> specific <laughs> they, development projects. In America. In a, no, here, with you. <laughs> I mean, Dr. the Shah. money they gave, basically, they gave to the United States. Dr. Shah. I mean, that is a political decision. That is not a humanitarian decision. It's a political decision, and we understand. They've $400 million, billion dollars that were given to Mr. Trump was not really humanitarian. It was not because they believed in, in, in the justice of his cause. This was a political issue, and we understand. Dr. Shah, let's, let, let's talk about talks. You personally, along with Yasser Arafat, Mahmoud Abbas, a range of Palestinian officials, you've spent years negotiating with Israel, with the US, with Europeans. You weren't involved, I think you said, in the famous Oslo talks that saw an agreement signed in 1994, but you saw it, as did Yasser Arafat, as a new beginning. He said it would complete the march of peace, guarantee the legitimate rights of the Palestinian people, and realize justice. It didn't do any of those things, did it? it was, the agreement was oversold, wasn't it? No. The Israelis never committed themselves to it, and the Americans never put any pressure to make them commit themselves to it. This was an agreement signed in the White House. I was there. This was an agreement signed with Mr. Rabin. The moment an Israeli extremist, violent terrorist killed Ishaq Rabin in Tel Aviv, singing for peace, and Mr. Netanyahu came and took over, Oslo died. Israelis don't implement anything in Oslo today. But anything. The, but the late and hugely respected Palestinian academic Edward Said was scathing about Oslo, wasn't he? He called it a Palestinian surrender, a Palestinian Versailles. He said what made it worse was that for at least the previous 15 years, the PLO could have negotiated a much better arrangement. No sympathy with that view? I read... Uh, so again, the Palestinians are split. I read, I read uh, Dr. Said. You, you are, you're angry when the, Israeli, when the Palestinians reje resist. You're angry, when, angry. The, when, the the when the Palestinians go to peace. I'm, you are I'm critical when, they agree, when the Palestinians sign an agreement with Israel. You are critical no, when the Israelis no, don't, don't implement no, it. Don't put it on me. I'm asking, <laughs> I'm asking you questions. Edward Said said to the advocates of this peace document who claimed they had no alternative. The correct way of phrasing it was that we had no alternative because we either lost or threw away a lot of others, leaving only this one. A quarter of a century, mm. a quarter of a century of negotiations, and at the end of it, all you had to show was an acknowledgement that the PLO represented the Palestinians. That was it. That w it wasn't much, was it? That's not the issue at all. Well, he saw it as the issue. What he saw, really, he was... Saw it as what, what he saw was a different expectation than the expectation made by our leadership. 
He expected any interim agreement never to become a permanent agreement and that the Israelis are going to use the interimness in order to take the land and the water, which they did. And I think he was wise and he saw it. Abu Ammar saw this, but he thought we could overcome it. He thought that with the international support for the peace process, the support of President Clinton and, and all of that, and the presence of Mr. Rabin might make it different. You built in 1994, you created a Palestinian authority with one of the largest security budgets in percentage terms of any state in the world. Roughly, okay. roughly a third of your $4 billion budget is, goes on policing, doesn't it? That's more than for health and what, what education. Is the reason? the reason was to protect our ability to continue implementing that agreement. The reason is because that you wanted to turn this into a police state. No, we you? did not. Because you have. We did not. You have. What we wanted was to implement our part of the agreement. Namely, our part of the agreement was security. That the Israelis used security as their excuse for not giving back the Palestinians their land or their rights. Where does torturing your detainees come into your idea of creating security? Because by the end of October last year, the Independent Commission for Human Rights in Palestine had received 150 complaints of torture and ill treatment by Palestinian Authority security forces. Why? How, how does that come in? I mean, this goes on and on no, year this, the, after the, This doesn't year. go on and on. Yes, it does. No. Well, in the first, I've been asking this the question first, of Palestinian in, in officials the like you no, no, no. for the last 20, yes, 25 years. In the, first six year, in the first years, until 2006, we were in Gaza. And we were in a unity. And we brought in the Red Cross, which is really not its duty. The Red Cross usually should be looking at what the Israelis do as occupiers. You're telling me your security people are not torturing detainees because they are. And they, you know they, this, they, and they, I know this, and they've been doing it for decades. Yes, but you this, know this. But this is, Why is it too much for you to stop torturing civilians engaged we, in peaceful we exercise stop. of and their we, rights? And when? We, when and are we, you going we to stop? We take to jail anybody when are you who going does to stop? this. And it still no, goes on. There is, it's in there is torture in America. It's if you, in if you never have, mind America. You're not responsible for America. I'm talking you to are, you are responsible Palestine. to be fair and to look at the, the parallel. I talk to them look about what they do. I'm talking to you about what you do. I'm talking to them when you're talking to me. You're not an official in America. You that this is not really fair. The, the, our, right, the, you're not responsible. No, no, no. And because the very, Americans very may do limited, it and other countries do it, that's an excuse. There is very limited torture. That I, 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 I simply challenge you. If you say uh, 100 cases over 50 years, there is a difference between that and what the Israelis are doing in, in Guantanamo in the life, and what the Israelis are doing in their jail. Basic question. At what point, this is not allowed in our, in our constitution. But you do it. Can you answer me this question? At what point in the life of this Palestinian authority are you going to start bothering about human rights? What point? At what point in our discussion are you going to talk about colonial settlement. In what point in our discussion you are going to ask me about the atrocities the Israeli government... You've the, told me quite do. a bit. At one You've time, told me a quite a bit. I didn't. We you didn't did. even talk yet you about did. settlements and colonial settlements except as a principle. What destroyed I'm this... I'm talking to you about what you do. You, I, you, you, I know about you, you decide to talk about what you want to. The question is, there is a big size of destruction of the peace process caused by the colonial settlement program and a very tiny part that you are exaggerating and make it look like it is the problem. The problem is settler occupation of this land and the decision by the Israeli government never to give back, never to go into a two-state solution, never to allow us to regain half of Jerusalem, never to, to give us the freedom and the choice to be a really free and democratic country. We are a country under full occupation, under full colonial uh, uh, grabbing of water and, 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 and land. And you, yet that doesn't, op doesn't really interest you. All, all, the, all what you're interested in are few cases of atrocities that I condemn if the police has, has committed them. This is not a government policy. This is not a commitment by our government. This is not a political act. We talked earlier about hope, and you said Palestinians should never give up hope. But la last October, you were quoted by the Arab Weekly as saying, the peace process with Israel should be declared dead, and Palestinians should wake up from their peace dreams. What did you mean by that? That peace process, that Oslo thing, that piece of poetry that Edward Said write turned out to be right. Oslo is dead. 
And in fact, Mr. Trump, the peace dreams Mr. Are dead. Mr. Trump is not looking to revive Oslo. He is thinking of a new deal. Uh, the Europeans in Paris were not looking at Oslo. They were looking about a permanent deal. Oslo is dead. The Israelis killed it. The Israelis killed it with, with, with colonial settlement, killed it with control of our lives, killed it with, 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 with all the, the actions they have did in order to take out of our hands the whole of the West Bank, including Jerusalem. That's what killed Oslo. So Oslo is, did not die naturally. Oslo was killed by the Israelis. You can ask Israelis in the street, is Mr. Netanyahu really going to stop building settlements and taking away the... Of course not. Is Mr. Is Mr. Netanyahu really interested in a two-state solution? Of course not. So what killed Oslo is that, not uh, criticism of, of our human rights behavior. Now, there, there are countries who deserve much more criticism about their human rights behavior. Nabil Sharf, it's been good to have you on the program. Thank you. Thank you.